Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another special episode of Herschel Talkers. Uh, we've got a special guest, return guest, uh, Hugh from 247. Just wanted to first off say Georgia's national champions of uh, 2021. There it is. How, how does that sound? How are we doing today, Hugh? Uh, sounds amazing. I'm good, man. Uh, just, you know, still living uh, in, like, I guess a a non-fantasy land because it's reality now, but, you know, living off the high. Uh, went to the parade yesterday, so that was um, that was fun. But, yeah, you know, just now, um, you know, it's kind of like the 24-hour thing. I gave it – I've given it, like, a week, and now I'm just ready to see what we do moving forward. But, you know, I, I told Bama fans, we own you for 365 days. There ain't shit you can do about it, so – there you go. That's great. Yes. Yeah, speaking of the parade, I watched the, uh, the recap yesterday or the, the review. How was, uh, how was the atmosphere? And it looked like it was great and had a, good, a lot of great speakers. Yeah. I mean, um, I didn't go to the parade because there's just too many people yeah. <laughs> crowded trying to be up on the gate. Uh, so I went and I went, I had a ticket um, inside the stadium. So I went in the stadium. Uh, it was cold as hell. Um, but um, yeah, it was good. Um, you know, People had a lot to say. A lot to say. Uh, Sankey um, made a comment about he's been to a bunch of these parades and uh, presentations, and nobody's turned out like Georgia fans. Uh, Kirby super appreciative. The players are super appreciative. Uh, it, was, it was a good deal, man. Uh, glad I could be a part of it. Um, but yeah, it was cold. I had to get out of there before all the traffic got crazy, though. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, it's good to see Jordan Davis. He repped the uh, the Braves jersey. It was cool. Uh, Jamar did a good job. Curse Kirby, and uh, it was good to see G, uh, DJ Shockley. I guess he was kind of moderator. He was MCing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely good. It looked like a great turnout. I'm sure that's good for recruiting too. Yeah, I mean they had uh, specific seats on the ground for recruits. So like, I mean, what what better way to kick off a junior day weekend? Um, celebrating the Natty, having those players be on the buses for the parade, and also you know get to sit there during the, the presentation of the trophies and stuff. Right, that's great. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Jump to the game. Georgia wins thirty three eighteen. Um, great win. I know in the first half, some people are saying if you were a neutral fan, what was it nine to six at halftime? But I felt you know definitely uh, picked up. Uh, the fourth quarter. <laughs> exactly yeah what, what would you say was kind of the pivotal or the turning point of the game in, in your thoughts where you know georgia kind of uh kind of took control if you would say or what are the most important plays uh i mean i kind of called it i didn't call it but like um when when jameson went down i was like oh this game is over um mm -hmm. if we if we can score a touchdown they're probably not going to beat us just because at that point you're depending on people that haven't played all season to make big plays um, in the biggest game of the season. Um, so that was a pivotal play. I uh, hated for that kid, um, especially, I mean, he's projected top, what, tip, top 15 pick maybe um, to Terry ACL in the last game of the season, um, which, you know, is a whole nother topic of why, you know, I don't begrudge kids that don't, that opt out of these, bowl games um you know that was a big pivotal play uh i think a, to me the biggest play this, of the game was really um after bama went on like a 14 play or it was a, a bunch of plays and we blocked their field goal yeah. to feel the energy and the momentum shift in the game um and so i think that was probably the biggest play because it, it shifted momentum in the second half which at that point it was kind of like going both ways. It wasn't really uh, – nobody had the momentum. I think that shifted the momentum of the game. And, of course, the 40-yard touchdown catch by 80, where we never gave up the lead after that. So, Right. I'll, <clears throat> my opinion, I definitely agree with that. I thought the, um, the big run by James Cook, 67 yards, kind of opened it up, and it showed because we were struggling running the ball. Yeah. And I think earlier in the game – I was going to ask you if, you if you got any background on this. So – when they changed, uh, moved Jamari down to guard, and then then they put uh, Roger Jones. I noticed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it went to like it went to the commercial break, but um, did um Erickson go down with like a little bit of knee injury or because showing like holding his knee, and then it cut to break, and they came back and they didn't really touch on it. 
Um, he actually kind of stayed in the game for a minute, unless I unless I missed it where he got injured again. Um, he got he got leg whipped on a play. So he got like somebody fell and they kicked him like in his ankle knee area or like leg area. Um, and I think he was hobbled. And because of him being hobbled, I don't think he was probably as effective as he could be. Um, and then they put Jamari in at right guard and put Broderick in at left tackle. I mean, I think we still struggle some in pass pro, even with Jamari in, but I think Jamari's what six three, maybe three thirty, three forty. He's a road grader in there, man. Um, and it it makes a bit a big difference when you have a, a powerful guy in there moving people around. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Sean Sean said that he thought that was one of the big uh, changes in the game was, was yeah I didn't even I didn't even notice it at first because you know like I'm not an O line guy so I'm not a uh, I wasn't really paying attention yes. uh, but then I was like damn we're running the ball real well and somebody was like well 69's in and I was like oh okay this makes a lot of sense then yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I will say uh Will Anderson he was he, he had a game he was definitely being dominant compared to the first one but uh, on that- uh, I I actually think he was more quiet in this game than he was last game. Um, like the last game, you know, I troll Bama fans like he didn't really do much. Um, but I mean, what did he have? Four tackles, um, none of them for loss, no, no sacks. I mean, he um, he got some pressure in Stetson's face. I mean, I take nothing away from the kid, right? I have a lot of feelings about the hype surrounding him because of. As as a as a defensive guy, as a as a person that looks at football from a um, a big picture perspective, he does one thing really well: go f- go forward. Uh, that's really what they asked him to do. Um, I actually think Dallas Turner is a better football player than he is. Um, I just think they allow Will to like go wreck shop. He does. It's rare that he's lined up over the left tackle. He's always he's mostly over the right tackle, which is usually the worst pass protector. Um, usually the less athletic of the the edge protectors um so you know i don't think that he had as big of an impact on the game um but you know he wrecked shop all season um and i think that's a testament to our game planning and our o-line stepping up and keeping him out of the backfield causing havoc i mean we did still give him five sacks so i guess whatever we dedicated to him we uh you know gave up something on the other side and then on the offense side, um, Stetson Bennett obviously struggled at first. Was there ever a point in, the, in, in there they're like, we got to, like, first, second quarter, like, hey, get JT warmed up. I know he just looked a little off. He took the sack, and they were real struggling in the first half. Was there ever a thought where? Well, I mean, I, I made up my mind to stop thinking that they were going to pull Stetson probably. After, after the SEC championship game, um, I was like, if you don't pull him in that situation, you're probably never going to pull him um, unless he's, you know, seriously injured. Um, I just was like, I hope, I hope he gets it together eventually. Yeah. Um, because I mean, for all of what Bamba was doing, they weren't really, they were moving the ball, but not capitalizing and not scoring touchdowns. I think if Bamba was scoring touchdowns, I probably would have wanted him to be pulled. But at that point, it was never more than a three point game. And so, you know, at that point, you just play defense, keep running, keep pounding, trying to run the rock. Um, play complimentary football, play field position. Um, and, and that's what we did. And he eventually, you know, pulled it together on those last uh, two drives. Yeah, and then hearing the ESPN story that came out, the reporter saying that I guess he kind of awkwardly landed on his, his wrist and okay. had one of those, like, massage guns. And I think they even said at one time they warmed up JT. I didn't know all that, so. Yeah, I mean, I was on the other side of the in the other opposite corner. So like I couldn't, I wouldn't have noticed that. I mean, I probably wouldn't have noticed that if I was on our side of the field on the sideline. Um, but you know, I also wasn't looking for JT to get in the game. So um that I said it on the board earlier this week that explains um the inaccuracies on passes that seem very, you know, routine. Um but yeah, I mean it's a national championship game. You gotta figure it out. And he figured it out. So I mean, he gave now, and now he's now he's a legend. Exactly, came up clutch. You got to give it to the kid. I mean, I'll eat crow. I questioned him all year. I didn't think we could beat Alabama, but hey, got to give it to him at the end of the day. Pull through. Probably one of the best throws I've seen. Ad Mitchell. I was that was great. Yeah, I mean, it was. It reminded me of the throw he made to um, 
Burton in in the Orange Bowl with a little bit um, more degree of difficulty because the the defender was still on him. Um, so that was a hell of a hell of a catch by AD, but it was a hell of a throw by Stetson to get it to him um, and allow him to make a play. But yeah, I mean, I guess Crow's Crow can go all around. You know, I, he wasn't my preference. He wasn't. The guy was, you know, warning out there uh, because, you know, I just I could tell the difference in how the offense ran with uh, JT. But, you know, he got the job done and, you know, he, he has no apologies to make at this point. Like, you know, he, he said it. I was he wasn't going to be the reason that we lost the game. And he wasn't he wasn't he went from being the woke to the goat in exactly. series. You know what I'm saying? So, um Kudos to that kid, um, and we'll see how everything plays out in a few months. It was great. I was gonna, um, I was gonna share our uh, video just to get it out. So this is, uh, let's see how far it shows it. Um, okay. Well, uh, speaking of that, what's your, what's your thoughts on what do you think Bennett is gonna do um, going forward? I know he's he said he's gonna meet with his family or his dad. Um, what do you what do you see, Bennett? Or what do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't know. So it's it's a very interesting thing because I think everybody expected somebody to leave the room um, this week. It's past that period, I guess. Um, JT will um, be there at least until May, um, and then if Stetson comes back, so who's all actually going to be involved in this battle? Like, who's going to get the fair shake? I don't know. Um, I'm assuming Gunner will be the <laughs> odd man out in this situation. Um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. Personally, I don't think if this is, like, a true quarterback battle um, where everybody's getting the fair shake, I don't I don't see any way that sets and beats out uh, those guys. How about you? I can't hear you, bro. Sorry, man. I had a um, yeah, I was looking at it this way as he he's probably not going to go to the pros I mean, at all. He's not. I mean, he probably he might. He might I mean, I think Shannon Sharp said he might get a, a camp invite. Yeah, I was about to say he'll probably do that. So you kind of look at it this way: Do you want to go out on top, or do you maybe want to come back and you know, you know play just because? You want to be a part of Georgia football, but you could risk injury. Um, I'm not sure where he's at if he's going to get his, his master's or I guess he finished his degree. He says he wants to go. He says he wants to go to law school. So I don't know what he's doing. So I'd say go out. I mean, go out on top. But I mean, I'm sure if he came back, he's going going to be leading going into spring. I'm sure. I heard uh, Brock's been coming on. I know you got Gunner coming in. Um, Beck's probably transferring anytime now. I assume he hasn't left yet, so I don't know when he's planning on leaving. Yeah. So. I, I, it's a very, I, very crowded room right now. I'll it, say that it is. There'll be a lot of moving parts. Well, yeah. I guess what I just want to know come. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. Come spring, I just want to know maybe who's probably going to be OC if Mark and left if he leaves, and then who's the quarter. You know, who. I mean, I guess the first guy you think about is Faulkner because he's already there. Yeah. Um, but I personally want somebody from outside. You know, okay. maybe go get a Joe Brady. Uh, maybe uh, since you know Monken doesn't love to recruit anyway. Um, no Bobo, right? No, bring the boys back. I agree. No thanks. Yeah. Like no, no disrespect to Mike Bobo. He's done a great job in the past. Um, I'm really weary of Kirby having a bunch of his boys on All staff, right. um, and I and I, because it gives me a lot of like D Dabo vibes, right? right? So like, um, I would want somebody that you know runs a more up-tempo, up modern offense uh, that's still kind of pro style. I don't know who that guy is. I'm not an offensive guy. I'm not an offensive guru. Um, so I don't I don't know who, who that is and what that looks like. But I would probably say no to Bobo. If 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 they were asking me, Hubert, sign off on this, I'd probably be like, nah. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Um, try to share this video real quick. Go ahead. Good work. So this is right before Kyle Ringo.
Not sure what Sean's doing there. There you go. There it is. I'm pretty uh, intoxicated. I think you're – so you're sharing the wrong screen. Oh, well, I'm spam. Did I miss it? Oh, you're, sharing, you're sharing your email. All right. Are you seeing that at all? No. No, nothing. Okay. Let's try it again. Are you seeing that at all? Yes, I see it now. Okay. All right. He's about to break the couch, man. That's what Charles do. There it is. All right, we've probably been drinking since like eight. So anyway, hold on. It's it's. I always want, like. Did you guys literally have this set up? Like you just had a camera set up. <laughs> no, actually, our buddy um, Patrick, we call him Nate Dog, was he's always known we we're big fans. He was he's a neutral fan. He's like Hornets and a Carolina Panthers. He was there. He was okay. like, I'm gonna film you guys like recording y'all. Yeah, he, it was ironic. Yeah, it was. Okay. We didn't set it up. I didn't. I didn't see the Kyle Ringo pick happening. You know. Yeah. yeah. How about the I, Kirby meme? Everybody seeing him jumping and get down, but then I loved it that he ran it back because it kind of pushed it in a little more. Just dug it in. Yeah, I mean, we messed up my made my prediction not as close as I, yeah, I made yeah, it. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, look, if I'm, I don't blame Keely. Hey, on the biggest stage of the season, yeah. if you get a pick, you try to score. I go down for what? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go try to score. I mean, something bad could happen, but you know, it didn't. So. So all the um, – so I know it's 41 years. It's been great, everybody. So how do you think this go, does for Georgia football, you know, going forward? I know we're going to lose a lot in transition and recruits and transfer portal and, and coaches. Where do, you, where do you kind of see us going forward in the landscape? And no more 41 years, no more 1980 jokes. Where do you, where do you kind of see it? I mean, who knows? Um, I think it really is dependent on how long Kirby wants to stay in this. Right. Like he, Kirby's 46 now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see Kirby coaching into his 60s, right? So if we can get 10 to 15 more years out of Kirby, right. um, I, I think we can win three or four more. I don't I don't think we'll have the same success that Saban has. Saban came into the SEC at a time where um, it was right for the picking, right? Um, and then he extended that legacy because – it was such a down cough. Like we were, the SEC was winning, but it was really just Bama winning. Like if you look at the the talent on the teams um, in comparison, it's just been on a downward trend since he came in because people were running. Uh, Urban Meyer ran away. He had, he had heart issues. Um, Rick was on the end near the end of his career. Uh, Les Miles is Les Miles. Um, it just and Auburn, yeah, like in Florida, you, you know, it's just it, – it was a perfect storm. So, I could see Kirby winning probably a natty every three to four years um, until he retires because um, just getting there is hard, man. Uh, you got to go through them. So, I think a lot of people should temper their expectations of us, you know, winning every win, – winning year after year, every other year. I, I, I don't see that happening. Um until Saban retires, because you know they recruit just as well as we do. Um, a lot of the stuff is luck with injuries. We got lucky that none of our injuries were catastrophic or you know season ending uh, for people that you know play integral parts until this this year. We caught Bama in a good year um, where they were inexperienced because they're still talented. I, like this, this being like Saban's best coaching job, I, I don't buy that. There's a lot of talent on that team. Uh, they're just very young. Um, but, yeah, you know, you got Day. You know, I don't I, – it, it's too hard to tell. I think from a recruiting standpoint, this has probably solidified us as a top two, three th- team every year. Um, uh, probably see a couple – a few more one, number one classes. Maybe next year we'll be a num- number one recruiting class because it's always the following year, not that year. Um, and then, you know, now we just got to consistently win the SEC – if we can if we can consistently win the SEC title, then you know all bets are off. If we can't, you know, if we're trading with Bama, 
we don't have to be undefeated every season um, moving forward. But I think we'll get a lot more respect um, nationally. Um, I think Kirby got the monkey off his back. So, you know, getting that first one, sometimes that turns into a waterfall, right? Um, and so we'll, we'll see. We will see. Um, I kind of I kind of look at it from the perspective of Saban as maybe like Tom Brady or Michael Jordan, right? And Kirby will be like um, LeBron and you know Peyton Manning or somebody, somebody that won multiple rings but or multiple chips, but they're never going to be the goat. So yeah. Okay. But as a Georgia fan, I don't give a damn about him being the goat. I just want to keep winning. Um, okay. you know. How about uh, Saban going forward? He's 70. I, you know, I heard a couple people were saying, is he kind of like maybe handing over the torch because I know Jimbo got him, Kirby got him, or is this going to motivate him even more to make or not? Uh, I, I think this is going to motivate him because, you know, he might be happy for those guys. You know, those guys were with him, helped him get it out the mud, right? You know, Kirby was with him as he built – um, the, the Bama dynasty in the first nine years. Uh, Jimbo was with him when he won his first, his first natty. So those guys probably have a special place um, with him versus these newer guys that have been on the staff for maybe two, three years and then they leave. Um, so I think there's a little bit of, you know, proud, proud papa kind of thing, but also like, oh, okay, don't get too big for your britches. I'm coming back for you. Um, I, I fully expect um, that I'm going to beat the brakes off of Texas A&M next year in, uh, in Tuscaloosa. Uh, and I expect us to see them in Atlanta again. And it'll be a tough game. I think our quarterback situation will determine how that game goes. Um, if we can get a quarterback, because our defense isn't going to be the same defense. I think it'll be a really good defense. I think it'll be a top five, top 10 defense, but it won't be a historically, um, de historically great defense. Um, and so because we're just losing a lot. You're losing right. two line, at least two middle linebackers. You're losing your three best defensive linemen. Um, well, maybe not even your three best. Three of your four best, right? Because Jalen Carter is a beast, man. Um, you're replacing a lot. Scene's gone. Kendrick's gone. Um, some depth is gone in, in the secondary. Um, it's going it's to be interesting. But I think from an offensive standpoint, we're probably going to get a little bit more explosive um, offensively next year um, if our quarterback is healthy. And depending on if we have a quarterback, it's going to be able to get the playmakers involved. And we're going to open up the offense. We're going to have to open up the offense, I think, next year. Um, I think we got comfortable not opening up the offense um, because nobody, if we got up by seven, nobody was going to beat us. Um, so we'll see. I think, I think, I, It'll, it'll be interesting for sure. Yeah, and speaking of that, um, it was a Jalen Kibber to the Gators. What's up with that one? That's like, man. What I heard is personal. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I look at it from this perspective. I don't think that if it is a personal vendetta or, you know, personal issue and he's trying to show Georgia something by going to Florida, I don't think it's going to work out the way he thinks it is. Yeah. Um, one kid's probably 185 pounds soaking wet um, and unless he's going to gain 10 pounds in the next nine months it's not going to turn out like the way he wants it to um, coming if, off a shoulder injury too right yeah coming off shoulder injury but I think his shoulder's fine um, I think he's you know he's gained a little bit of weight but that could be from you know Eden and not being able to be as active. He's not, he's not practicing um, as much. He might be, he might actually be finally getting his grown man weight. You never know. Um, I think, I think from a pure cover standpoint, um, outside of Jaheim Singletary, he was probably going to be our best cover corner. Wow. Uh, from like the kid has feet, he has speed, he has athleticism. He just wasn't a big guy. And I think um, we will see. We will see. But I, I I think from the perspective of I don't ever regret these are kids, right? Yep. I made a lot of emotional decisions when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. Um, and if he thinks that's the best thing for him and he wants to prove a point, so be it. I don't think it's gonna work out the way he thinks it is. Um, but that's his decision, this is life. 
Um, he has a pre-existing relationship with Corey Raymond, who's, you know, put a lot of guys in the league. So, it, I mean, he could go to Texas. They're not going to be good. You know, go to AM. Right. You know, like, where, where was he going to go um, and compete at a high level um, and get the coaching that he needs to get to the league? Because I think – a lot of people lose sight in that. Like a lot of these kids want to get to the league. So once you're on, once you're on a national championship team and you win a ring, what else is there left to do other than make sure that your draft stock's high as possible? So you, point. So you get drafted, right? Okay. So that's why I said I don't really begrudge it. I understand that this is a business. Coaches treat it like a business. Um, the only people that are emotional about it are fans, right? I don't. And being that I play football in college, I don't get emotional about you know, kids making a decision on where to go, you know, to play football is football. It's a kid's sport, it's a game. Um, and it's not personal for them as far as like towards the fans. It's like, hey, you know, something something went on. We don't know what it is, we're not privy to it, but something went on where this kid felt like, hey, Georgia staff didn't do something that I felt like they should have and I'm gonna go play for their biggest rival and try to stick it to them. So, you know, by all means. I just know because it's the Gators, you know, that's all. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Fans fans are going to fan. You know, I'm I'm not that type of fan. I don't – like, at the end of the day, I'm not going to wish anyone failure. You know, you put out – you get the energy you put out. Yeah. So, um, I don't hope that the Gators win. I wish that kid much success against against everybody but us. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so um, – Throw at him next year. It might be coming, coming, coming for you. I mean – Hopefully he don't get one on one with one of our running backs, yeah. and hopefully he doesn't have to block get blocked by Darnell if he's still on the team or one of the tight ends. Right. He, he the game's gonna get physical, um, but them his buddies too. Like these guys came in with him, so like the guys like Darnell, Keeley, uh, Burton, they all came to school together. So I don't think unless they got a personal issue with him, they gonna do too much to him. <laughs> so. Okay. So you were you were at the game. How was the uh, how was the atmosphere? And what would you say the percentage Georgia fans to uh, to Bama fans? Um, well, I got a good a good glimpse of what it was after the game was over. Uh, going in, I thought I had heard it was like 55, 45, 60, 40, or like some 65, 35. In there is a minimum 70, 70 minimum seventy percent dog fans. Um, you can see that with the lights um, in the fourth quarter. You can see that at the end of the game when Bama fans cleared out. Yeah. It, that that stadium was pretty much still packed. You know what I'm saying? So um if you can have home field advantage at a neutral site, we might have had it. Um I I am a little disappointed in our fans. Um on the fumble call, I think it was. Um they start throwing bottles on the field. Yeah. Pulled <laughs> yeah. to Tennessee. Yeah, they they pulled a, they pulled some pull some uh, volunteer um, <laughs> activity. But I mean, there were some, there were some pretty questionable calls um, during that game. None that, you know, I guess truly impacted the game at the end of the day um, that went against us. Uh, the, the halo thing on, I think it was speed on punt, um, the overturned fumble at the beginning of the game where, you know, if it's not a fumble, it's intentional grounding. Um, there was a time where um, Bryce clearly was throwing the ball away and they didn't call intentional grounding. Um, you know, things happen. Um, it's part of, they're human. So I think I'm glad it worked out for us. Uh, I think that was a little trashy, but you know, sure. fans, go, fans go fan. A lot of people were, you know. <laughs> it was intense. They, a lot of people had been, you know, down in a, fruit, a few brews and stuff yeah. up until that time. So, you know, you could see how that could turn into a situation where people throwing stuff on the field. But they were about to get uh, snatched up by the police because the police was definitely on the field looking at them, like, who, throwing, who was throwing stuff. Right. Yeah. How was the, like, local, Lucas Oil Stadium and how it was all set up? And did it feel like that natty feel? And what was the good, well, you know, was it good experience as a fan? Um, so, I, you know, this is my first natty. I didn't go to the 17 because I was in California. Um, right. And I had just came, I had just left the Rose Bowl. Right. Um, so 
if we're talking about the stadium, I don't like the stadium. I think the Falcons have a way better stadium. Um, Mercedes Benz is way better. Um, and then from a environment feel, from like a, the energy, it's pretty pretty big, uh, pretty pretty strong. Um, I would say it was definitely more intense than the SEC championship game. Um, I don't know why, but it was uh, maybe because people weren't Georgia fans weren't coming in as cocky as we were on December fourth. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely intense. It was, and I was talking a lot of a lot of um, a lot of crap. Right. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And then looking back on it with uh, Kirby, kind of looking back on 2017, I was bringing this up with some friends the other day. So. Gus got him with the – they beat the dog crap out of you and, and we got revenge on him. And then, you know, Kirby – I mean, uh, Saban. I think that whole rat poison was yummy. was maybe not the best thing to say. I know they just beat, you know, Georgia and they were the underdogs. Said that? I missed that. Oh, Saban? Yeah, he said that? Yeah, he said it right after the press conference. He just goes, the media – he didn't really point it right at Georgia, but he goes, the media, I loved you guys because that rat poison was yummy. And just the way he said it was just kind of like arrogant little – I just wonder if they maybe use that because you know I think Kirby likes looking for. Uh, I think Kirby used the, the, condition, the conditioning thing more more than anything. Yeah, I think a lot of people you know think that these coaches don't they they silo silo they put themselves in silos, um, and they don't they don't read stuff. I mean they're human. It's only human right. to like read what people are saying about you on the internet and watch what people are saying about you on TV. Yeah. Um, and Jordan, Jordan admitted that, Kirby admitted it. So I think a lot of a lot of it was the second guessing of this team that really, um, you know, motivated them. And I was one of those people, right? All season, I didn't think that, like I thought our defense was elite, but I didn't think it was this this um, once in a lifetime defense that everybody was making because I knew that our secondary was susceptible to big plays. Um, I knew that we were struggling. <laughs> like, it didn't seem like we were struggling because we were scoring and winning games by a lot, but we were struggling on offense to make the simple plays. Um, and, you know, I don't, I'm one of those people I don't believe until I see it. So I had a little doubt in Kirby, you know. I, I think he's, I think he's the best, I've always said, I think he's the best option. I wouldn't fire him okay. for anybody because um, I don't know who the hell we would hire. Yeah. But, you know, I'm one of those people. You got to show me. I don't. I don't believe nothing anybody tells me. Right? Show me, and I believe it. Right? And so, um, you know, I think a little bit of that, a lot of second guessing about playing Stetson. You know, questioning whether or not the defense was locked in and out of shape or for whatever reason. And I've heard some things about you know maybe practice was a little too hard that week going into the SEC championship game. Right. Um, you know, because I heard some other stuff that just sounded ridiculous um, just because, I mean, I don't care how much action you get the night before the game. The game was at, what, 5 o'clock, 4 or 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. that that's not going to bother you unless you, you know, was drinking too much or doing something you had no business. But, um, yeah, I think – I don't think Saban – anything Saban says probably didn't even register to Kirby. Like, he – Rat poison is something they both use. So I don't I don't I don't think this this was as much as the best thing. I don't think I don't think Kirby like Gus. Just, right. like, just like he don't like Mullen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, and then real quick, we'll touch on this. Uh just with some of the rumors coming up. You know, you got uh Monkins rumored. I think Cortez Hankin gone. left today. Monkins gone? No, uh Cortez. Hankin's gone. So who who would you uh, any and then um, I know you're, you're a DB guy, mm -hmm. die He's the one I'm kind of surprised. I figured he, that was a good. He was there a year and he made some good improvements and seems mm -hmm. like good recruiters. Do you think he's just looking for something different or you got him a ring and wants to build his career? Or? I mean, I don't want to say what I heard because it's um, it's hearsay. Mm -hmm. um, I think if he doesn't leave in the next couple of months, it means that they're seeing a shift in certain things. Um, and I think those things, you know, it's a new relationship and there might be some, I think there's an adjustment going from coaching in the big 12 at West Virginia to coaching at Georgia in the SEC. So I'll leave it at that about a die. 
uh, if Adai were to leave. Um, I think it's probably going to be T-Rob, which I think T-Rob's a good coach. I don't know that he um, – I'm I'm just big about like nepotism. I think Muschamp bringing in one of his boys. I, I don't know. I mean, how good was Miami secondary this year? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'll have to look into the numbers. Um, I he he produced uh, J.C. Horn at South Carolina. So I mean, who knows? I think I think he could. I think he's a great recruiter. That's for sure. Um, so you know. These guys get paid more money than me, so I, I I don't know, I don't know who they're gonna hire. But I, I guess you know if they if they think T. Rob's the best option, that's who they'll hire. If a die were to leave, as far as Hankton yeah. leaving, um, Sean, Sean's giddy. He loves it. I mean, I talked about this earlier on the board today. I don't I don't think that it's. I think a lot of a blame goes to Hankton, but I don't think it's Hankton's fault. Um, I get it. It's George. You should be able to recruit everybody and get everybody you want. Get everybody you want. Um, But these kids, these kids listen to negative recruiting. These kids are also smarter than people give them credit for. If I'm a top flight receiver, I'm not going to a team that rotates as much as us. And I'm definitely not going to a team that is, you know, giving their receivers, their best receivers, three or four targets a game. I'm sorry. I'll be like, I'll pass, bro. Um, especially when the room is like packed, right? Um, we we have like 11, 12 receivers rotating seven to eight. Well, who wants to sign up for that? You know, um, that's why I was worried about Burton. Um, I think that's part of the reason George went on ahead and left. Um, you know, so I think a lot of a lot of the blame is misplaced on him. Um, because, you know, he didn't, he hasn't gotten in the last two cycles, these elite receivers. Now, Adane did a great job this year um, as a freshman. You know, he had some inconsistencies as most freshmen do, but I mean, you could argue he made the biggest play of the, of the season. Um, right. And in that game, uh, Wad McConkie, three-star. I, I know that apparently that was a monk in evaluation, but, you know, Hankton coaches him. So, um, and he, he did a pretty good job this year. Burton, Tenacious, did a good job. Picking his top, maybe two, top two round pick, you know. You know, Hankton coached him up too. I think our receivers are better than they were um, in 2019, right? Um, our receivers are more consistent in catching the ball than they were in 2019. Um, so that you can see the development that he's done. Um, honestly, I think, um, any names that you, maybe they'll focus on, or I know it's still, I honestly would put Monk in there, receiver coach, but he doesn't like to recruit like that. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't know that there's a receiver coach out there that I, I want. Right. Um, I don't know. Like, like I said, I'm a, I'm a defensive guy, so I don't really pay attention to receiver coaches like that yeah. or like, um, but I mean, the best <laughs> recruiter is and developer, in my opinion, is Brian Hartline, and he's at his alma mater, so he's not going nowhere. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to find somebody somewhere else. Um, and I, I, just, I just haven't dug into options like that to understand who's who, who the best guy would be. His Bama's, uh, I mean, it'd be hard to get him. His Bama's wide receiver coach, I don't even know that guy's name, but I wouldn't want him. Okay, I have did you see Bama's receivers this year? Outside of the, the top two guys? I just know, you know, you look you look the last couple of years, you know, the Waddle. And but, but that's the thing. The guy that is their coach the last two years isn't this guy. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, this guy's new. Um, Gaddis was the um, receiver coach, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, in tw- um, two years ago. I know it would be a reach, but, you know, some people mentioned like, uh, you know, Hines Ward or I don't even know what he's doing, stuff like that. It might be a reach, though. I think I've heard people say Terrence Edwards. Um, he would have heard, that recruiting. I heard Hines Ward. My thing is, like, are we firing one developer to hire another developer? Because I don't know what these guys do as far as recruiting. We, we've never seen them have to recruit, you know. 
Um, are we just hiring them because they're UGA greats? Um, I want the best receiver coach. Mm-hmm. I want the best coach, period. The best recruiter and best developer. I don't want because they went to Georgia. I don't want because um, they're a great recruiter. I want someone that has balance because at the end of the day, if you're, if you're getting talent and you're not able to develop them, it does not matter. Yeah. Right? If you are a developer, but you can't recruit, your, your receiver room only has certain, a certain ceiling. So I think we have to trust Kirby to, you know, be pa- he's going to be patient with this hire. We also got to understand and see if Munkin leaves, right? Because if Munkin leaves, that, that opens up a, that opens up the possibilities, right? Um, but, you know, I also would like to see a diverse hire just because I think it's important to have uh, some diversity on the staff um, and, you know, have, having guys that – having a coach that the guys can relate to when your room looks a certain way. Right. I hate to say it that way, but um, I think there's a reason you see a lot of black DB coaches, black receiver coaches, black running back coaches. Um, and so I think that – Keeping that, keeping our staff diverse, which I think is a bit like a positive on, on our staff, is um, is important. And then um, I know we pretty much got any, pretty much all the meat's been on the bone, as they say. But um, how about any other real big targets for twenty twenty two? I know Christian Miller's still out there. Are they pretty much done, or any anybody else you think? I know it's coming up on February. Was it February second? You mean when you say big, you mean like five stars? Or, or just like four stars. You think they'll add anybody else for 2022 or is it? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, th- I, I think we should be comfortable with understanding we're probably just going to sign Kristen Miller, if anybody, um, and sign the guys we already have. I know they're bringing in EJ Lightsey um, on the 21st. Um, I know Shamar Stewart's supposed well to come on the 21st. I just don't see either one of those guys in this class. Um, Lights, he's a three-star, but he's a South Georgia kid, I think. So, um, you know, some people will want him on the team regardless. He was a former Florida commit, I think. So, uh, we'll see. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's a lot of meat left on the ball for this class. I think a lot of the attentions are actually been shifted to the next year. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, it was a surreal – Legendary, great year, 41 years in coming, and it was uh, really great. I'm glad. Everybody. Let's hope it's not another 41. Exactly. I hopefully don't see that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully Kirby can give us another one soon. Yeah, for sure, man. Okay. So I appreciate you coming on the uh, nice snowy day, and uh, it's a great year, and we'll probably maybe look at uh, spring practice coming up. All right, bro. Be easy. All right. See you. Go dogs. Go dogs.